Okay, so today we're going to make this effect. Um, I don't know what to call it, sort of like a motion detection thing with two layers. One's colorful uh, and pixely, and the other one's like blocky and um, updating randomly in the background. So we're going to make this today. It's basically composed of two layers. Um, you can see here on the left is just the top layer, which is like a little colorful uh, motion map thing. And on the bottom is uh, something looks like, let me isolate it, um, like this. Uh, no, that's not right. Yes, yeah, so on, on the top right, you can see it. Let me press P. Um, basically, the top two uh, images in the top row are combined into the bottom one, and we'll just make each separately. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put this off to the left side. My other monitor because I have not memorized this yet. Cool. So the first thing we got to do is uh, create a video device in. Set mine to Media Foundation. There we go. Then we want to put it into a square. Let's do transform sorry fit vertical that looks good let me do press alt n create a null sounds good and the first we want to do is create the colorful layer on top so to start with that we have to down res it let's do uh custom resolution 128 and make sure let me zoom in here make sure to set these to nearest pixel um we'll be doing this a lot um, and this basically will sample the image, so it looks nice and pixely, which is what we want. Cool. So now the next step is to blur it and add a level to it, and then we want to add a lookup table. And within lookup, we can add a ramp. Um, let me zoom in here again. Let's click in the middle to add a third gradient, set it to green. The rightmost I'll make red, leftmost I will make blue. Um, and you'll see what that does is basically make this kind of cool effect. But we want to go back to the blur and set the uh, interpolation to nearest pixel. Same with the level, just to keep it on night nice and tidy. And the last on the lookup will also make nearest pixel. So that's pretty much that effect you can see. Um, oh, actually, this ramp is not set to blue for some reason. Okay, there we go. That's right. So that's the effect. Now we just got to mask it to the motion. And the technique we're going to use is just using the cache, um, cache and a comp to offset it. So go back to our null cache and just set the output index to like Minus 50, that's good. And then we wanted to do a comp, set the comp to subtractive, and then drag in the null, oops, one back, and then you should get this sort of effect. Nice, woo, fun. We want to turn it basically black and white, so we can use that with this threshold top. And that'll convert it to white and alpha. We can play with the settings here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And finally, we'll just combine these to comp with the multiply uh, thing. And so this is pixely, but it's like still interpolating, not doing the perfect smoothing job. Let's make sure to change this comp to nearest pixel as well. So that's pretty much that. I'm actually going to take the threshold and bring it down a little bit. That's that effect. So now we just got to do the bottom layer. Bottom layer is a little more complicated. Oh yeah, let's save it. I haven't even saved it yet. Bad habit. Call us tutorial three. Cool. Let me just move this off to the side. So we're actually gonna start this with another cache, but this time it's gonna be more extreme. Set the cache to like minus 116, exactly 116. And that doesn't need to be that 116, it's fine. Do whatever. Uh, 
I'm gonna middle click and do a. It's um, the reason I'm gonna res down when doing if res is because we're actually gonna use uh, what's it called blob tracker, which is Touch Designer's built-in uh, open CV library. And you can see here it's running pretty smoothly because I'm sending it only like an eighth of the resolution. If I sent it a full res, it would really slow down the computer. And right now it's just picking up everything, but we want to compare it, um, compare this image on top against this delayed one. So this delayed one on the bottom, which is the cache 116 frames back is going to be our background image. So if we hover over this node, it says background image, drag and drop that. And now it's going to actually only look for movement. So if I stand still, <laughs> doing a weird dance. If I stand still, it doesn't really pick up anything, but it's still pretty sensitive. Let me play with that. I like to turn my bound color green. It looks cooler. And uh, play with the threshold. I find bringing the max blob size up and the min blob size up helps and delete nearby and delete overlapping. And that really helps. That, that's sort of the effect I'm going for anyways. Okay, what do I got to do next? Oh, so yeah, now we kind of have to convert this into a format that we can basically make rectangle instances. And the way I've found tutorials online to do it is you first put it into a dat, info dat. And this is just so we can see that what we want is the U and V, which is the X and Y coordinates of each of these squares. Um, and we want to smooth it out a bit. So we have to actually convert it to a chop, which is kind of annoying. So use the dat to chop and you see we get all the noisy data. So we only want the U and V column. Let's go over to select column. Let me zoom in. Select call. Select column list by name. Go to U for for uh, I'm trying to the U word umbrage. V for Veronica. I don't know. Oh, and make sure to set the output to channel per column. Uh, so now we're getting just the U and V, which is great, but it's still super noisy. Let's add a filter to that. Filter is basically a way to smooth out. The data. Uh, it's a quiet phone. Um, this is a little too smooth for me. So I'm going to change the type to edge text and bring it down to like something like there. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. That works. Um, let's uh, put this into a null because we're going to convert it to uh the dat again that to chop two uh and this time select include names and output what do i have the output to something like that okay we're back i forgot to turn on this setting filter per sample in the filter one node. So this is the thing that's smoothing out our data. So make sure to turn that on. And there we go. Now I have all the squares I want. Convert this, add another null here. And so now with this X and Y data, we can start instancing a bunch of rectangles. Um, and this is gonna be a pretty standard setup. We go to soft rectangle. Uh, Click this and I like to create a geo from the rectangles just so the rectangles inside the geo. Go over here, comp geometry. Let me zoom in. I'm trying this new zooming feature <laughs> in OBS, uh, but yeah. So click geo. Um, and we also need a camera, of course. Camera. And we need a constant material just to get a flat lighting on the. Uh, uh, material. Drag and drop the constant onto the geo and select parameter material. That will apply the material to the rectangle. And then we need a render. Ugh, oh, can't spell. Render for the geo camera to point to. I'm actually going to send this render to the resolution of my original fit back here, which should be, oh, I didn't change it. It should be 1080 by 1080. Um, cause that's what Instagram likes. Copy parameter, go to render, click on re right click resolution and paste, um, reference. 
And you can see there's going to be a dotted, li dotted line that connects this very first node to the very last one, in indicating that I'm passing a parameter. Anyway, so now it's a square. Um, importantly, we should also, actually, let's do the instancing first. Um, Geo, go to the instancing tab, turn on instancing, drag this null to the translate top, and then set the translate x to zero, translate y to one. Basically, we're gonna look at column zero to translate in one instance of a rectangle to, um, like it says, zero point whatever, and then look for column y, or sorry, look in column one to translate to the, the y axis. And this is pretty noisy, let's bring the rectangle slides down. Uh, do do do, like point two, point three. It's fine. Nice. So there's that. But the coordinate system's kind of messed up because our camera is not. It's, it's adjusting for perspective, which it shouldn't. So we go to camera, go to view, change the projection orthographic, uh, ortho origin bottom left, ortho width one. So now it's more akin. Let me turn this on in the background. Now this, these white squares are sort of more per, uh, in line with what I'm, the data I'm feeding it. Um, and there's, I could adjust my blob tracker because it's getting a lot of stuff in the bottom left in my, in my um, shirt, which is very contrasty, I guess, but um, we can adjust that later. So now what I want to do is blur this. Bit it. No, 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 no. I want to add a res. I want to down res this. So let's blur it. D smell. D smell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I go to the res. Let's do a custom resolution. Let's do 32, 32. Nearest pixel. Let me zoom in again. This is fun. I love zooming in. Nearest pixel, nearest pixel. Sweet. Let me just take a peek at my notes. What am I gonna do? Oh yeah, yeah. So now I do a comp. Uh, I'm gonna basically overlay the original null. So again, this is gonna be a long hassle connect. So this way, the default is set to multiply. I'm sort of being cut out of where the, where the white squares are. Um, let's go to common, make sure these are nearest pixels as well. That way we have a hard edge. Cool. Um, nice. So now we're actually going to add a feedback so these layer on top of each other. Because on its own, this is not very awesome. Add a feedback. Uh, let's add a keyboard in. It's a good habit. Just so we can reset this. So press the cross, feedback, drag, drop onto chop reference. Um, now we, when, when we press one on our keyboard, it'll reset the feedback, which is not doing anything yet because we haven't connected it. I set it to a Luma, which is what I have for this, and then set this to an over. Should drag and drop the over to the feedback and drag the comp there. Um, oh. Is this what I want? Okay, I think so. So let me change the Luma. Black level just a bit up and then post change the gamma. This is like really up to you, but what do I have on my, that's sort of what I want, I guess. 0.99 capacity. So it fades over time I press one. Okay, let me do contrast in the pre slightly not as bright. Yeah, that's sort of, sort of getting where I want to be. Uh, I don't I think the gamma is too strong. Oop. Actually, this is, this is too much. Okay, I can play with this forever, but um, we're getting to some effects that we want, right? So now, uh, I'm going to convert this to mono, black and white. Uh, now we're basically ready to, uh, oh crap, what'd I do? Oh, I press perform. I don't want that. I press escape, okay. <laughs> uh, now, now, we're, now we're ready to basically over, or overlap these, so I'm just gonna over, 
go all the way back here. Let me create a null just so it's a little clear. If I look back what's going on, I'm actually going to put this on top. That on the bottom. Set the interpolation here as pixel. I think I actually have to go back to this original over and switch from the input to the input one. And okay, this is somewhat similar to what I showed you. Uh, I, I, I could go back and play with the Luma levels. I'm going to do that just because it's bothering me a lot. Why is it being so contrasting? I think it's... that's a little better. Okay, that's more manageable. Nice. Ooh. So now, basically done, the last thing I'll do is add a transform. Uh, just because I want to get rid of the alpha background, change the background color to one, turn on the background color, just fills in the alpha with black. So now, that's pretty much the effect. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, yeah, so you can export this with the movie file out. Oops. Yeah, there it is. Move fall out, save it, do whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the motion detection, pixely, blocky, glitchy effect. Thanks for watching.